Are we ready? Yeah, when you are. My name is Tony Gillespie. I am the Vice President of Public Policy and Engagement with Indiana Minority Health Coalition. Um, and that is a long title just to say that I work with, um, I represent the agency in legislative issues with Indiana legislators, with federal um, elected officials, and um, I, along with my team of um, staff, one staff now, and interns help shape the policy agenda for Indiana Minority Health Coalition and our 20 plus affiliates that we fund around the state. The conversation that we're focusing on is our partnership, academic community partnership. And um, we have had such a great partnership over the years. Absolutely. And I, yeah, I just love it. Um, and it has become the model for, as I look at other partnerships that I wanna have with other communities here in Arizona. So how, how did we, how this all get started? We met, you were, um, I think the State Department of Health hired you to look at doing a needs assessment. So and I had that so, fast backwards. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and so you were calling all of the members of the HIV statewide community planning group. And you oh, were calling, right. just being gracious, introducing yourself. I'm Dr. Beth Meyerson, and I'm going to be working on. And so you Yeah, were they so wanted to study among Black MSMs. Right. They wanted they to wanted know to the needs of, of men who have sex with men who were Black. Mm -hmm. And so they hired a white woman. Okay. Right, <laughs> right. What's up with that? And you were so gracious over the phone I, because immediately when you say what you were calling for, I became incensed and I thought that dirty State Department health, you know, here they are again. But you were so gracious and so um, forthcoming with information. And as I listened, you were very seriously, you know, working towards building this this needs assessment process. And so I said, well, you know what, did they ever explain to you that there actually has been a researcher identified, a black gay researcher identified? And then when I said his name, you actually knew him. And so for me, it just, um, it reinforced how, um, how not a good partner the State Department of Health was mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. the HIV division, how, how just disingenuous that was that I had already just weeks before identified um, a researcher, a researcher, right. a black researcher that had done research in men's health and a, a number of other issues. And then it was a researcher that you actually knew. Mm -hmm. um, but for you, um, because despite, and I don't know if I ever told you this, I just really, I want to dislike you so badly because <laughs> I, she's, she's part of that confusion. But there was mm. no reason to dislike you. You just were, because after I told you, you took a deep breath. You said, well, I am going to stop calling people and I'm going to talk to the State Department of Health. And I'm going to get myself out of this. This is just, this is just ridiculous. And so how, you know, how, how could you dislike somebody that, you know, once you learned of exactly what the landscape was and the lay of the land, you thought, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. And well, but it just wasn't right. And none of us, so you didn't know that they had brought me in. And I no. didn't know that they had brought in Marlon, our colleague. Right. And so that was really crazy. Uh, and, but we, we made our way through that and I'm really glad. And you know, I yes, I did walk away from that contract because that was the only thing to do. That was the only right thing to do. But it wasn't right. long before IMHC then said, you know, we don't have this statewide needs assessment generally. There's been no plan for years and I mean, it had been over at least over a decade, I think. And yeah, that's when we been. finally got to work together. You know, the academic side is, you know, proactive and I'm headed down the line. I can see tenure or I want a position here. And for community, these are people who wants all of the meetings and all of the excitement goes away and you are uh, graciously part of an article that's published, you go back to the same community with the same issues. And so I think what, what sets our projects both apart and on fire is that people go back to their community having been part of this process. And then they go back with ideas and skill sets that they try to you know, do something else 
um, at the project level. They go to the city and say, hey, we participated in this project and near the issues, how are you gonna help us fix it? And so it just gives everybody a piece that they then go back and do something different when it just keeps giving and keeps giving and keeps giving. So I think yeah. that's what community research is supposed to do. And I think that that's what good partnerships are supposed to do. Um, you know, I'm sure that there are people who participated in those studies and there were a series of them, the Secret Shopper, the Community Health Center study. I know that there are Over-the-counter testing study, that was over -the -counter a blast. Over-the-counter testing study. I know. And people who participated who then ended up presenting in a workshop at the CDC that I'm sure they didn't, I love that. Have, they didn't bargain for. So I know those people are still making reference to those projects. Yeah. Even though yeah. from an academic perspective, they're old, they're dated, it happened, it's archived, it's posterity, mm -hmm. but you know, for them it's still real and living and, I, and that's exciting. 